Welcome back to Legit Street Cars. My name is Alex and in today's video, we're installing a bigger intercooler and that's about it. There's really not much more of an intro needed. Oh, except this isn't an intercooler kit specifically designed for my E320 CDI, but whatever, what could possibly go wrong? You're going down intercooler. And here are the goodies, a universal intercooler kit for the CDI. So here's what you get. Obviously you get your air to air intercooler. This is a bar and plate design, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, then they give you a bunch of tubing. It comes very nicely wrapped and you get a bunch of different bends. So you get some 45, some 90s, some straights and everything is bead rolled and it actually looks really nice. So they do this so the silicone couplers don't pop off. Uh, and then you get a bunch of those too. You get a couple of 90s, six straights, you get some bracketry and hardware and every hose clamp you could ever need for the rest of your life. <laughs> Look at how many hose clamps they give you. This is totally crazy. Uh, so I got this universal kit from Victory Road Performance in Virginia and I'm kind of the test bed, the guinea pig for this. So I have to figure out in this video exactly what we need to make this kind of more of a direct bolt on kit uh, and then it will be offered to you guys. So eventually there'll be a link down in the description box and I'll update you guys in a future video on a direct bolt on intercooler kit for the CDI. That way you're not wasting a bunch of money uh, on tubing and clamps and stuff that you don't need. Okay, so obviously there are no instructions for this job and we're gonna kind of figure this out together and I'm gonna show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. But that doesn't have to be the case for normal car repairs and maintenance. For about the last year, I've been using a factory style workshop manual for my Mercedes and you guys can get one of these manuals for practically any car for only about $20, actually less than that because I'm gonna leave you a 20% off coupon code in the video description box. And I just wanted to show you briefly how I use this on my own computer. I'm gonna show you this on one of my Mercedes cars. So after you've bought your downloadable version of your workshop manual, you're gonna type in your VIN number right here. I've already selected the E55 and then we'll just use the keyword search box. And let's say we're gonna type in engine and let's replace our engine mounts. It sounds like a good thing to replace. Click on engine mounts. I'm gonna click right here, start search. And here we go, remove and install engine mount. I have read this document and we're just gonna open this up a little bit bigger. And here you go, step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the engine mounts uh, with pictures and everything. And if there's ever a part of the procedure that you don't know how to do, like remove complete exhaust system, they give you a subcategory, you click on that. And here you go, here's how you remove and install your exhaust system. Uh, and they give you everything you need to know, including torque spec. So every nut and bolt that you remove, you can torque back to factory specification. So I've, I, obviously I've tried this on Mercedes Benz, I've tried this on a few other makes and models, and I've gotten some really good feedback from you guys that although the program looks different for different cars, the information is basically just as good. Uh, so definitely check it out in the video description box. The old intercooler is off and the CDI is naked. And look at this, got a lot of dirt and debris that's built up over the last couple hundred thousand miles, a lot of bugs and stuff. We'll have to clean that out. It's blocking my airflow to my condenser and radiator, so that is not good. Uh, I put these intercoolers side by side so we can take a look and I realized I've become quite the hoarder with this diesel project. I have parts everywhere. There's the old turbo over there, the catalytic converter over there. Still not done with the brakes and suspension. I just haven't had time. You try having a YouTube channel, a full-time job, and a couple kids in an old house. It gets a little crazy, so I gotta finish up the brakes that are sitting over there. Uh, the factory intercooler, right off the bat, you can tell it's a little bit longer than our aftermarket one. That's because we're kind of at the mercy of the intercooler companies here. Uh, unless you wanna spend a lot of money on a custom core, which I don't wanna do, but our aftermarket intercooler is taller. Uh, so overall, this is a bigger intercooler, and I'm gonna go over this in a minute, uh, but this one, the design of this one, actually cools a lot better than the factory tube and fin design. And if you guys were around a couple videos ago, you know that my factory intercooler is damaged and leaking anyway. It was hit right here and leaking air, and it was hit here as well. So we gotta replace it regardless. That's a great time to modify your car. All right, intercooler is mounted. That's it, end of the video, see you later. <laughs> Just kidding, we have the screw jack holding this up. That way we can kind of figure out what we need to do to get this permanently mounted. And right off the bat, you can tell 
it's not exactly centered. It needs to move over to the left-hand side of the vehicle. And in order to center it, we're gonna have to cut some of this rubber away. So no big deal at all. Uh, something else, I have to make sure that the intercooler is higher up than this part here. This is currently the lowest part of the front of the car. Uh, and we need it to stay that way. That way we know for sure that the under engine belly pan is still going to fit. Now, as far as physically mounting this intercooler to our car, uh, I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna do, but I bought some L brackets, some corner brackets. They're made of steel. I think this would work really nicely uh, and some longer bolts. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drill right through the front of the crash bar and install these bolts. And Mercedes-Benz also drills right through the crash bar as well. You can see these massive bolts go all the way through. Uh, so we want this to be a very positive mount. We want it to be very strong because this intercooler, I'll talk to you about in a minute, because of its design is actually heavier than the factory intercooler. When in doubt, just use some zip ties. <laughs> I temporarily mounted this thing up so we can put the bumper back on and just kind of test fit to make sure it's gonna clear from the bottom. So it's not centered and it is lower than I'm going to have it. But if the bumper fits like this, we're in really good shape. So let's find out. All right, bumper's on. So let's take a look at our clearance down below. And realistically, the intercooler is gonna sit more like about there, possibly a little bit higher. And as you can tell, we got plenty of clearance. I don't think we're gonna have any issues fitting in that under engine belly pan. Uh, so that should be pretty good. And then let's take a look from here. Nice, nice. And then once we get the E63 front bumper, this is kind of like opened up a little bit more. This is gonna look really sweet. So let's get to drilling into the crash bar and permanently mounting this thing to the CDI. And here she is, the intercooler is centered, it's leveled, it's fully installed on the CDI, and it looks amazing. I'm really happy with the install so far, and I got a little bit creative with some tool usage. I was just about to take the entire crash bar off because I really wanted to drill it from the inside. It'd be kind of hard to hit my marks. I'd put the intercooler up here with the brackets and then marked where I needed to drill, but if I was gonna do it from the front, it'd be hard to kind of figure out exactly where it'd end up on the other side. So I was just gonna take the whole thing off, do it properly and make sure that it turned out like this, centered and even. So I figured since I have to drill anyway, why not experiment uh, with a new tool that I got? I don't know if you guys have noticed this over the last couple videos, but I picked up a couple tools from Milwaukee's fuel lineup. So I have their 3 8 drive electric ratchet and their stubby 3 8 drive electric impact. And so far, so good, guys. These things are really light. The batteries last forever. I haven't charged them in a couple of weeks and they're very, very powerful. Uh, so I figured why not get a couple big self tappers on this guy and just try and basically drill it in from the inside without taking anything off. And it totally worked. And these are very sturdy guys. These are in here uh, as tight as can be. This is very thick metal and this is awesome. We don't have any bolts sticking out this way. You don't see any of the mounting brackets uh, and you just get to the top bolts to remove the intercooler from up top. So you never have to touch those brackets again. So really excited about this. It ended up working out really well and it was super easy. So now we have to figure out how to connect our intercooler tubing here to here and the same thing on the other side. But first, let me talk to you guys about why this style intercooler is more efficient than the one that came on the CDI from the factory. Okay, so what we just installed in the CDI is called a bar and plate design intercooler. And this is how most of the aftermarket high performance intercoolers are designed, primarily because they cool better. Now from the factory, some cars, if they use an air to air intercooler like the CDI, they'll go with a tube and fin design, which looks like this on the inside. You know what, I think I could do a lot better for you guys than just a screenshot. Let's take a look at the inside of this intercooler. All right, Mercedes intercooler 
you've cooled off your last hot air intake charge. Man, these Germans don't mess around. Got it. Look at that. Okay, the next part of the video is gonna be a little bit confusing because it's actually the next day. So this is future Alex coming to you even though the rest of the video was filmed yesterday. Don't worry, this will all make sense, I promise. Okay, so the short of it is is that after I cut this thing in half, I was expecting it to look more like the screenshot that you guys just saw, which I haven't even edited in yet. This whole future thing is kind of weird. And that is not what we see here. These are square bars. Now this obviously is something that you can see from the outside, but most all auto manufacturers use tube and fin style designed intercoolers, and they all have cheap crimped on plastic end tanks, and they're very light. So this one had all of that. So I just assumed it was tube and fin, and that possibly, since this is all dirty and it's hard to see through, that this was crimped on the inside, and that we were gonna see kind of more of a rounded tube on the inside here, but that's not the case. This looks like a bar and plate design intercooler. So I stopped right there, I moved on, and I filmed the rest of the video, everything that you're gonna see now. And by the way, the intercooler looks awesome on the CDI. Oh, and you're gonna find out why this is cut into three. It has something to do with that. That thing is uh, very powerful. <laughs> So what I did to get you guys good information is I called Bell Intercoolers. They're one of the most popular intercoolers in the world. They make very high quality intercoolers, custom ones as well. And I spoke with CX Racing who made the intercooler that's on the CDI right now. And they both agreed that this is indeed what I thought. It is a tube and fin style intercooler, kind of the dead giveaway again, plastic end tanks crimped on. Then also at the edge here, there isn't a bar connecting these. And then just generally speaking, these tube and fins are cheaper. They're very thin walled and they have less cooling surface area on the inside. So see these fins right here? That's where the air actually travels through to get ingested by your engine. Uh, on the bar and plates, the aftermarket high performance ones, the good ones, uh, there are more of these uh, and they're just kind of like more dense. So they take away a lot more of the heat. Uh, and now if you see these kind of smashed ones right here, they're not really smashed. They're just going the other way. So that's where the air goes through. Uh, and that's a different design on a lot of the barn plates as well. So. Basically, these are cheaper, they're lighter, the uh, manufacturers use them because of those reasons. They actually do flow a little bit better, but they don't do a good job at removing uh, the heat. So the barn plate is just gonna be constructed of a thicker material, it's much stronger, uh, and it's gonna have more of these fins to remove more of the heat. So if we had a barn plate, this may not have actually broken. These are very light. The one that's on the car is about uh, double the weight of this. It's just a lot beefier. So these do flow a little bit better if you're comparing them to the exact same size bar and plate. But in our case, uh, we put a bigger one on the car. So we're not really too concerned about flow. It's gonna be fine and it's gonna cool much better. So anyway, hope that all makes sense. Now enjoy the rest of the video. All right, so now onto the hard part. We have to figure out how to connect this to this and the same thing on the other side with minimal fabrication tools and I'm not gonna lie, minimal fabrication skills. <laughs> so I've bought this. This is a three inch to two and a half inch reducer. So from the factory, this metal end of the intercooler piping is about three inches and then it goes to like a straight up 90 degree bend on that plastic end tank on the factory intercooler. So it's definitely not three inches all the way through. And uh, I think that's very restrictive, not to mention that two and a half inches on the cold side of the turbo can flow a ton of horsepower. So this fits on here perfectly and it's gonna clamp down to our metal really nice, really strong. So at this point, we just basically need like a 90 degree elbow. I think that would be perfect right now. Uh, actually, there is another guy out there that put one of these on here and he used an aluminum 90 degree elbow. But for now, I think we're gonna get creative and we're gonna cut up a piece of straight pipe uh, and use a 90 degree silicone connector and see if that works. All right, why didn't I use this on the intercooler? It would have been much easier. So 
so much nicer. Wow, this is a lot of fun. Oh yeah, the intercooler on the CDI is looking awesome. This one, not so much. No, it's seen better days. <laughs> but now that we have this all connected to the tubing, you can get kind of a good look at the finished product, sort of. I'll get to that in a second here. Uh, but this is really uh, pretty easy. We just put our straight two and a half inch tubing here. We used our reducer on this end to connect to the factory tubing and our 90 on this end to connect to the intercooler. And it's exactly the same on this side as well. And this would work really nicely, except for the fact that on the tubing, we did cut off one one end of the bead roll. So this is the bead roll right here. You put your clamp on this side. Uh, that way it kind of rests up against that and the hoses don't blow off. So that's what we're missing here because I had to cut that one end, but that's okay. I think a better route would be to get an aluminum tight radius uh, elbow right in here. And then we'll just have a straight piece of silicone connected to the aluminum elbow. And that's gonna be bead rolled on both ends. And then that will connect directly into our reducer and into the intercooler piping. And this is on really tight guys. This is not gonna blow off at all. Uh, this already has a groove in it. So it acts kind of like a bead roll in itself. From underneath the car, we can tell there is plenty of clearance everywhere. And this thing is mounted rock solid. It's not going anywhere at all. So this is perfect. Now, something else I wanted to talk to you guys about, and this is going to be some really cool content coming up, is eliminating the silencers. This car has two intake silencers, and I want to hear that turbo. So one of them is right here. It connects directly to the bottom of the turbo. And then the other one, it's kind of hard to see, but it's in here. If you see this piping, it goes right uh, somewhere connected to the piping. I think right there, there's like a plastic box, like basically a silencer. So I wanna remove both of those and that's gonna require some custom tubing, which honestly I can't really do here, but my guys over at Fluid Motor Union can definitely take care of that. So if you guys just wanna upgrade your intercooler, you can do exactly what you just saw in this video, but I do wanna get rid of those silencers to see how much of this turbo we can hear. So I'll be driving this car bumperless and all over to Fluid Motor Union, and they're not only gonna do the custom intercooler piping without the silencers, but we're going to do a full custom exhaust, the downpipe all the way back, all the way back here. And we're going to do custom resonators back here. It's going to be awesome. And I cannot wait to bring you that content. So definitely stay tuned for a future video uh, at Fluid Motor Union. Those guys are fantastic uh, with custom fabrication work. I gotta give you guys one last look with the bumper on. This thing looks so cool. Cannot wait to get the E63 style bumper on this car with that big mesh grill up front. And then from the bottom with the bumper on, nothing is rubbing, nothing is hitting. We still have plenty of room. And honestly, this fits like a glove. Well, that'll do it for today's video. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at Legit Street Cars. I do quicker updates on Instagram. So you guys will see exactly when this intercooler kit uh, comes out. And I'll also update you in a future video on that as well once we get the elbows in there. I wanna show you guys a 100% completed product on this car so you guys know exactly how to install one. With that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe if you're new, and most importantly, have an awesome day and I'll catch you all in the next video.